Okay, welcome to another video. This isn't one I was originally planning on doing at all, to be fair. So I got a Pine phone quite a while ago now, it seems. Like, really quite a long time ago. So this is the Braveheart edition. And I installed Ubuntu Touch from UB Ports on it. And I played around with it for a little bit, but I was quite underwhelmed with how sort of well it performed. So I just left it to the side and didn't think anything more of it. However, the other day I decided to just reflash it with a different image and I chose Mobium. And to be fair, I'm really quite impressed with how well it's performing so far. So what we're going to do is jump over to the phone and just have a little quick look around. Okay, so here we are with Mobian on the Pine phone. This is your lock screen here. By default, you're going to want to change the password because it's 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so your home screen is pretty bare to be honest with you. It looks a little bit like GNOME does, just squashed down on a smaller screen. You have the default sort of Debian wallpaper that you probably are familiar with now. You have a little keyboard button down here, suppressing so that. We'll expose your keyboard. Touch input for the most part has been okay. I don't notice any real sort of lag when using it on the touch screen. Now if you touch up the top panel up here. There we go, so it took a little second there. This will reveal some little quick toggles, but not all of them are quick toggles. So if I was to press Bluetooth, that might actually not turn it on but open up the settings for bluetooth and it uses the gnome settings so here's your settings sort of page so everything there will look pretty familiar if you've ever used gnome so if we go into the about section here it's going to take a little second there we go so memory wise you've got 1.9 gigs so you've not got a huge amount of memory on this pine phone so sometimes it does feel a bit slow when you've got a few things open you've got debian gnu slash linux bullseye slash sid we have an incoming call. I have no idea what number that is. It sounds like a drop call, so we will not answer that. <laughs> but there you go. You know that the calls are working. Go away. Done. There you go. I don't even have to do a, um, a little demo of the phone working. So here we have the windowing system. It says Wayland there, and it's using GNOME version 3.36.3. So what we're going to do is get out of that by pressing that, and that will expose your sort of multitasking view, and you can have more than one application running there, and there's a little X there. And you also have your app drawer there where you can access other things in this view. So what we're going to do is open up, say, what can we open that's not going to send it too crazy. Let's open up the messaging app here. There we go. So now you can have a few applications up here and you can scroll through them like that. So let's close that and let's close that. We'll demo the messaging in a moment. So by default, it comes with a few things. I'm going to want to install quite a lot of this. However, I'm not going to do it on the phone because using GNOME software on here, is very laggy so removing programs takes a really really long time so let's get out of this okay so what we're going to do is see what we've got so we've got the phone dialer there so as you can see we've got loads of missed calls there i've done some dummy runs i'll have to blur out those numbers here's your dial pad fairly straightforward let's get out of that and then you have your messaging we'll show that in a moment it comes with gnome web installed out of the box or epiphany and gnome contacts Comes with the 2048 game, archive manager, an authenticator, calculator calendar. The camera is terrible on the Pine phone. It's really not even worth mentioning, to be honest with you, but we're going to load it up. It at least works out of the box, though, unlike um, UB ports, Ubuntu Touch didn't work out of the box. There you go, there's the, uh, there's the phone camera for you. Not great. Yeah, you ain't going to want to really be taking any snaps with this, and it's very laggy on the actual viewfinder of the camera app. So let's close that now. So you also have GNOME Clocks, Document Viewer, so Files appears to just be Nautilus from what I can tell. It works okay on a touch screen, however, if you do things like that, that'll select the whole, like that'll do a select all. If you want to just go into one folder, there we go, we're in videos now, and it does have, so you can connect to network shares and stuff, but again, it's not all perfectly fitting on the smaller screen and I've noticed that with a few applications that I've tried to use. So if we go to, um, what was I trying to find? There we go, connect to server. You'll notice not all of that fits on the whole screen there, but I have managed to get it work, to work with some SSH stuff. So that's not too bad. Unable to mount location, that's fine. Let's go out of that. So that's your files manager. By default, it makes quite a small partition depending on the size of your SD card. I've got a 120 gig SD card in there. So what we're going to do in a moment is jump onto the computer and use Gparted to grow the partition so we can use all of that space. I've done it once already to test it. We've got about 20 gig or 40 gig so far, but I think there's about 70 gig remaining. So we're going to bump it all the way up. 
We have Firefox ESR, which is our web browser, as well as Epiphany that we just showed. This does feel a little bit laggy though, so it's going to take a little while to actually load that up. Yeah, it's taking a rather long time. Okay, we'll let that do it. It will open up in a moment. We'll have a look at some other stuff while it's going. There we go. So that's opened up Firefox now. Again, it's it's pretty laggy to be fair. You're not going to want to do a whole lot of web browsing on it. So if you just try and open up Twitter. Let's see how long it will take to load up Twitter. Yeah, so there's no instant <laughs> page loading on the uh, on the Pine phone at least. But these are quite underpowered devices. This is the um, Braveheart edition. It's loaded up quicker than it did last time, but it's still not fully loaded it yet. There we go. So it's just loading Twitter now. There you go. So we could log in if we wanted to, but we're going to get out of Firefox and just have a bit more of a look around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump on the computer and connect to it through SSH and then just have a little look at it through there. And we're going to uninstall a few programs like Fractal, Lollipop, Maps, and a few other things. Geary is your default um, email client i did try it with evolution plus evolution ews and it worked and i could connect all of my office 365 tasks calendar and everything else like that and then all the notifications came through up here so i was getting sort of notified for work and stuff which was great however using evolution on a small screen didn't really work because the window was just too blown out and nothing really fit on the screen so if there could be some work done on that to make it work usable for smaller devices, that would be pretty cool. Although the RAM usage shot right up. And when you've only got 2 gig of RAM, probably not the best idea. Right, so if we jump into, let's see what else we haven't looked at. So it has Telegram, and it's the desktop Telegram, as far as I can tell, the desktop Telegram package. And it works pretty good, to be fair. So this is the second image I've actually run on this exact phone. I've done one little dummy run and installed a few programs to see how it worked. And then I'll reflash it with a new ISO or image. So there you go. Telegram works all fine. I'm not going to add my number just yet. Right, before we jump into the computer side of things, let's do some little messaging runs. So here's our messaging client here, or sort of text. This way you can send your texts, instant messages, etc. So let's just drop that down for the moment. Yeah, I've noticed this. I don't know if this is just my device. If anyone out there's got a Pine foam, do that around there and let me know if you get a little issue there i think there must be a sensor there and it's just having some weird issue but anyway we have a cool little burner phone there look at that beast so we're going to see if we can send a text from here to there so i'll have to blur out any numbers i don't want no randoms <laughs> sending me any messages so let's create a message and let's just say does it have t9 this bad boy it does look at that who remember t9 we just said hello and we're going to send that to send oh do i have to write the number in i think i saved it as mobian there we go mobian so we're going to send that now and hopefully that will come through on this phone here there we go so we've got a notification that popped up and if we go to open up message as you can see we just got a message come through on that phone saying hello so that works absolutely fine we've already uh, had a little cold call for some random person so we know that the calling was working okay so now we're going to get out of this and I'm going to show you how the whole Bluetooth works. So it does actually work pretty well, which is the only thing that's a bit annoying. I wish this had sort of output so you could actually sort of use it on a different screen because that would be really cool to just have this as like a sort of takeaway computer in your pocket kind of deal. So if we go into the settings now, and if we go into Bluetooth, and we'll turn that on. I've already synced up a couple of Bluetooth devices. So they should just connect now. Hopefully they're on. Let's have a look if they're actually turned on. Right, the mouse has connected. Let's try the keyboard now. Right, I've just pre there we go. The keyboard's connected as well. So the mouse is actually pretty good input for Bluetooth. I haven't really noticed any huge lag there. So if you look, the mouse is working okay. So let's just put this on this little stand there. Okay, so here's your mouse, and again, you can just interact with it how you would sort of like a computer, basically. So if we close that off now, and then we have the keyboard here. The keyboard seems to work pretty fine as well. So if we open up a terminal now, we are going to install Open SSH Server, and then we're going to connect connect to it over SSH on the desktop. So we're going to go sudo apt install open 
they have a lot of potential this whole sort of mobile os is for linux though it just feels a lot nicer to be able to do this on your phone without having any weird sort of third party applications to do it for you one two three four we'll change the password when we're in ssh there we go so it gives you a little red bar to let you know you're in sudo and now that's going to install ssh for us and then once that's installed we're going to jump onto the desktop we're going to uninstall a whole load of packages like lollipop and a couple of other things then we're going to install htop and see how much ram this actually uses and then we're going to wrap it up there and i'm going to use this as sort of a secondary phone for quite a while and i'll probably do a follow-up video of it at some point okay that's nearly done 96 percent so it's a bit annoying that it doesn't recognize that you've got a bluetooth keyboard actually connected and it still pops open that by default but if we just close that that'll be gone now but so far out of the ones i've tested on this phone this has been the most usable and i think has the most potential moving forward right i'm going to pause the video now and then when we come back we'll be connecting to this phone over ssh I'll do that though I forgot to show you the landscape mode so this is where it's not as great because everything just feels a bit cramped into the screen so if we go into landscape mode now as you can see this is the multitasking view and it feels a whole lot squashed there there we go we've got a notification telling us that that command is complete and if we just open up something else let's say the text editor which is get it g edit get it takes quite a while to open ah no it doesn't at the moment so as you can see it does feel a whole lot more cramped in this view here so what we're going to do now is get out of this and we're going to jump into SSH. Okay, so we're on the desktop now. Um, you can probably still see that I'm on KDE Neon left over from the um, distro spinner. I'm still working on my full review for this. So I've actually been using it for a little over a week now. So if anyone's still waiting for that, I'm sure that will come out at some point. But anyway, onto the Pine phone. So we are logged in now as Mobian over SSH. And what we're going to do is uninstall a few of those programs that I was talking about that takes a little too long doing on the actual phone through GNOME software. So we're gonna go sudo apt remove and then remove things like lollipop, fractal, and whatever else I'm not really gonna use on it. So sudo apt remove, chuck a Y there. So we're gonna remove lollipop, actually I won't chuck a Y there and we'll see what it takes away with it. So we're gonna get rid of lollipop, we're gonna get rid of known maps. We're gonna get rid of gnome to do. We're going to get rid of Fractal. And what else is on this phone that I'm not going to use? Let's have a little look. We're going to get rid of Gnome Chess and Gnome 2048 as well. Okay, that's all I'm going to remove. So the password again is 1234. We will change that in just a moment. Right, so what's that actually going to take away with it? Do, do, do. Is there anything there that I'm really worried about? Um, hopefully not. All right, we're going to go for Y. We've got some updates to do at some point as well. I'll do that sort of off camera because it might take a little while to actually finish that. Right, so that's removed all those programs. So let's see if there's anything to auto remove now. Okay, so what is it going to auto remove? Do I want any of this? Gnome to do comment. Okay, we're just going to do it and hope for the best. If need be, I'll reflash the uh, phone. <laughs> right, and then after that, what we're going to do is sort our password out. Well, no, before that, we're going to install HTOP. Then we're going to do a fresh password. We're going to do a reboot of the actual phone itself and see how much RAM it uses once it first starts up. And then we're going to kind of end it there, to be fair. But I will sort of be doing a follow-up video at some point in this because, like I say, I'm going to use it as sort of a secondary device. Right, let's just clear that. Okay, so now let's install HTOP. There we go, so that's installing HTOP for us. So let's see how much RAM it's using at the moment. There you go, so it's using 569 megabytes of RAM, and I'm actually not going to bother rebooting because that seems to be what it uses pretty much as a standard anyway between 500 and 570 there's no swap device obviously because it's using an sd card it's probably not recommended to make a swap file or anything i've played around with swap files of when i've had ub ports ubuntu touch on it 
didn't really make too much of a difference to be fair especially when you've got such little ram anyway it's not going to feel like a super fast device anyway right and we're just going to quickly change our password as well from one two three so we're going to go password oh we're getting a bit of a lag in the terminal let's try that again password there we go wd maybe in current password is one two three four new password i won't tell you what i'm going to do um, but it appears to be best to stick to sort of numeric numbers as well because the lock screen uses like a number code to unlock so I'm going to just stick with that password is too simple which can't be more simple than 1234 can it I tell you what let's chuck a sudo in front of that let's get out of that can I control C this can I get out of this right control C is not actually doing anything right let's just re get out of this and reconnect to it okay let's try that again we'll do it with sudo Bang, right, so that's our password done. Like I say, I'm going to play with this for a couple of weeks and see how well it actually performs as sort of a secondary daily driver. Thank you for watching. That's been Mobian on Pinephone. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There's a link in the description. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.